Hello people, Secret Senpai here, and here's my manga collection! Yeah, anyways, here's my manga collection. Um, a lot of volumes here, a lot of stuff to check out. So over here, my whole top row is like all romantic comedies, dramas, slice of life, um, some Yuri, <laughs> got Yuri fan here. And my second row is more dark fantasy action type of mangas, which I know, I know you recognize some titles here. And then my bottom row is more um, a mix of different things. Same thing was over here, I have like a little Part. Can you see it? No, you don't see it. But I have like a little area right here. But yeah, I guess um, we'll go through here. So over here we have Kiss Him Not Me. I have all 12 volumes. Volumes 1 through 12. It is the Reverse Harem manga series. There's actually an anime adaptation of this, which people probably might know more than the manga series. I personally enjoy the manga better than the anime. I wasn't a fan of the anime adaptation. I thought it was lacking. In terms of in comparison to the manga. Next we got Orange. Now this one, I have both um, the complete edition volume. Both of them. This one is an awesome manga series. If you guys have ever a chance to read it, you will love it and it will make you cry. <laughs> it is a really sad um, story. I, I can't even explain to you what it is about, but I got both volumes. I, in fact, I read both volumes prior to when the anime came out actually. So what was that? 2016 I think the anime came out? Like literally a week before I bought both. Or at least I bought the first one. The second one I actually bought in Florida because I was on vacation at the time. And it was quite the dramatic read to watch while I was sitting on the beach. <laughs> it, was, it was sad. Next we got A Silent Voice. Now this is probably if not one of my favorite manga series. I was doing Attack on Titan this is probably my favorite manga series ever. I have all seven volumes, and yeah, I read this also prior to the movie that came out um, by Kyoto Animation. An awesome manga series that I have a chance to check it out. An awesome movie also I have the chance to check it out. I honestly have not read each one of these in full. I have read snippets of each one. Um, I just wanted to have it just to collect, to be honest. And then I'll probably binge read all of it. Next we got some Yuri. I got my Yuri collection right here. I got Secret of the Princess, which is just one volume Yuri um, manga. Then I got all four volumes of Kasei-san, Morning Glories, Kasei-san and Bento, Kasei-san and Shortcake, Kasei-san and Ape. I don't have the fifth volume. Um, because I know it's a five um, volume series of just Kasai-san, then the second one, which is a sequel, which is what, Kasai-san, Kasai and Yamada or something? Yeah, definitely a lovely Yuri manga series if you have the chance to check it out. Definitely one of my favorite Yuri mangas. Next we got Komi Can't Communicate Volume 1. Um, recently, or at least as of the past year, they actually started adapting the, um, or translating per se, the um, Komi Can Communicate manga series. So I'm planning on collecting these um, and reading them because I haven't read them. I have seen like um, images online, on social media of just different pages or even chapters. And I'm just like, yo, this is a funny series. I, pro I don't have, I like it. And yeah, reading it has been fun so far. I like, I love the first volume. I can't read it, read the other volumes and see what else will happen with the story. Next, we got Kaguya-sama, Love is War. I like how there's a bookmark in you still. Um, <laughs> I bought this literally when season one aired, which was what, a year ago? A year and a half ago? A year, two years ago? But yeah, um, I was planning to read this along with watching it, but I never did. So I feel like it's a show that I, I feel like it's the type of comedy that I'd rather watch than read. I don't know, but I'll give it a second chance and read it again, but... Next, in continuation to our Yuri, we have After Hours, Volumes 1 and... Um, this was on my shelf for a while, I actually bought this. I haven't bought Volume 3 yet, but these first two are really interesting. It's about two grown-ups, young adults, young adults, and, you know, they meet each... So basically, she likes him, but he doesn't know it because they've been childhood friends. So beyond PG-13, but if you want like a little lax manga series, a lax, yeah, it's really funny. So 
yeah, if you have a chance to check it out. Next, we got we got Garden of Wards, uh, Makato Shinkai, as well as five centimeters per second, Makato Shinkai. <laughs> Both of them also have anime ad adaptations, which you probably, probably heard of. A lot of people actually, at least from what I know, they don't know that there's actually manga adaptations of both. Um, but each of them having their own storylines or additional storylines to the movie that to the movie, if you guys didn't know. Um, five centimeters per second in this manga series, or at least in this manga, they do a little addition add on to the ending that you guys might not have seen in the movie. So I definitely recommend reading it, especially since reading it. I feel like you get to get more in depth with the characters in terms of their thought process that you might not have seen in the movie. Um, Garden of Words. Um, I would say that I would say that the um, that the film was pretty um, solid with its adaptation. I mean, in the ending that like a little extra that adds on to the movie. So I think that that was a little cute. But yeah, that these two are really good um, stories. Makato Shinkai. He always has good writing. Now in the farther end of the corner, we got some Inyo, Asan, Inyo Asano works. We got Girl on the Shore as well as Solan, Sol, Solanin. We don't know about Inyo Asano. Um, they, I don't know if it's a guy or a girl, but they write um, a lot of stories that are usually coming of age. They include romance, a lot of drama going on. Um, following the stories of characters who are trying to overcome some sort of hurdle, some struggle, um, some internal conflict with themselves mostly, um, which I've noticed, um, especially in both stories. If you have a chance to read some Inyo Asano works, definitely some good works of coming of age stories and some thought, -provo some thought provoking things that you might even find relatable. So yeah, I'm collecting some of their works. I love their style. Anyways, let's get to our second row, our lovely second row of dark fantasy shonen action. Over here, I have all 29 volumes of Attack on Titan. I believe I'm two volumes behind on the English translation as of currently. Definitely my favorite manga series, and this is definitely what got me into collecting manga, um, Attack on Titan, because I started reading the volumes literally after I finished season one and I was like yo I gotta continue from where they left off. Season one ends at volume eight so I started collecting it at volume nine and since volume nine I kept buying them. I didn't have the first eight volumes for a while um, until I noticed that they had like a they had like a special edition where like hey we got like all four volumes at a special price and I was like yo I'm good. I got a hat got hop on that. So yeah, that's how I got these two, um, the first eight volumes, after a while. Next we got Seraph of the End. I have all, I have up to volume 17. I'm behind all, on it also. An awesome vampire um, apocalyptic series. If you guys have a chance to check it out. In fact, I think it's by the same studio that did the anime adaptation of Attack on Titan. Did the anime adaptation of Seraph of the End. Which is interesting. I haven't seen the um, anime of Seraph of the End, but I know it is. It is probably really good. Um, here's Battle Angel and Lita, the Deluxe Edition. Now, this is actually what? The Deluxe Edition is completely seven volumes? I only have five volumes, and I have not even read all of these. I'm only, I've only read up to volume three. The Deluxe Edition of volume three. And I actually started buying these right when the, um, before the movie came out, actually. The live action adaptation of it which falls slightly short from the manga to be honest. Movie adaptates what the first volume of the deluxe edition and half of the second one if I recall. Okay now we are at the bottom row. I had to actually get in a chair because I'm too tall. My bottom row is really consists of a variety of manga. I don't really have a specific genre set for this area. I just Anything that can't fit in other shelves, go here, basically. <laughs> so over here, I have a lot of Junji Ito. At least I have three Junji Ito volumes right here. Got Tomi, Uzumaki, Gyo. Of the three, definitely Uzumaki is one of my favorites. Yeah, over here we got Planetas. I, I don't know, I bought this um, a while ago and I have not read it yet. Next we got four volumes of Maiden Abyss. I have not seen the anime of Maiden Abyss yet. And I have not read any of these volumes of Made in Abyss yet. So yeah, I got four volumes of Made in Abyss last year in May NYC because they had like this deal where it was like 10 manga, 
for what twenty dollars or something. It, it was a good deal. It was like 10, 10 manga for twenty dollars. And I was like, yo, let me just grab a bunch of manga. And I was like, yo, I got four volumes of Made in Abyss. Maybe mine, but this might be my chance to actually get into it. And I have not read it since. So yeah, there's that. I know it's a really dark series. I mean, it looks like it's gonna be cute fun adventure, but. It's a lie. Here we got three volumes of Imperfect Girl. So this one is actually a trilogy series by Nisio Isin. I like their works as well. Where there is this guy who is literally being imprisoned by an elementary school girl. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's the story. And it's really interesting because it's really psychological. You get into depth with the background, him trying to survive in a sense. Um, it's really interesting, but yeah, I, I definitely, if you have a chance to ever read Imperfect Girl, definitely read it. Next, we got Go Dore. Now, Girls Go Dore, if you guys don't know. I mean, you see the title. <laughs> Do not let this look to deceive you. It, well, how am I going to word this? So, I have all four volumes of this one. This is the first ecchi manga series I've ever bought. Yeah, it is actually, um, very comedic, if anything. Um, it has a lot of dirty jokes. I mean, they don't really show anything, to be honest. But a lot of jokes in there are dirty. Oh yeah, if you keep seeing me move this top thing on here, this is actually just like a short volume. Um, Schoolgirl by Osamu Desai. Um, famous um, Japanese author, novelist. Um, next we got Genshiken. I have not read this yet but it is about an anime club at a university and the only reason i bought this was because someone gave me the idea that hey siku you should start an anime club at college it's like oh i might just do that i need some um um research so i grabbed this started reading it i haven't finished it but long story short the manga anime club never happened so especially since i'm about to graduate next we got the manga series that started out my manga collection. Dragon Ball, the first volume. I was about to say Dragon Ball Z, but just Dragon Ball. This was the first manga that I bought. 2011, when I first started getting into anime. And last, we got the one and the only manga bible. I'm, I'm not even like lying to you. This is the manga bible. They actually, this is the bible. Just in manga form. They even have pages where it's literally stuff. <laughs> We got Bible scriptures in here, manga style. I got this as a present a couple years ago. Um, one of my family members knows I like manga. So they're like, hey, let me go get them the manga Bible. So over here, we're going to switch over to the handheld. These are like just some stories I'm actually currently reading or it's just things that can't fit on my shelf. So we got Fragments of Horror. Um, did I ever finish this? Yes, I did finish it. Junji Ito manga series. Definitely short horror stories. It's not story driven like um, these over here, um, yeah, these ones are more stories driven Junji Iso stories, Tomi, Uzumaki, and Gyo. They follow, each, each chapter is a continuation from where we left off in the previous story or whatnot. This one is not. Next we got the Isolator, which is, this is the, um, light novel, right? Yeah, this is the light, no light novel of Isolator. This is also by the same person who wrote Sword Art Online as well as A Kel World. Um, I've not yet read that, but I do plan on reading it soon. Neo Parasite, which is not a sequel to Parasite, but it is an anthology consisting of Parasite stories by different uh, man manga art artists. Next, we got Psychone. Now, this one is the first light novel series I actually bought. Um, really interesting story so far. I never finished it, but I will get back to reading it because this is actually really good. Yeah, it's a psychological romantic comedy. I mean, yeah, it even says on the title, title, but a cycle love comedy. So, yeah, interesting. Um, Happiness by Shuju Oshimi, another one of my favorite manga artists, who who I have both collections of Happiness as well as Inside Mari. Now, I read all of Inside Mari, which is really psychological. I read all of this online. Definitely awesome series. Same thing with Happiness. I feel like. Shuju Oshimi writes a lot of stories that are dark, but also psychological, nonetheless. Um, they also created Flowers of Evil, if you know that. Next, we got Satoshi Kun's Opus. 
Now, for those of you who do not know, Satoshi Kon is my favorite anime director, favorite storyteller, and this is his final manga that he ever made before he passed away almost 10 years ago. Basically the best summation of his work, I feel, um, where it's literally the dualities of reality and fiction, which is a theme that he plays a lot in almost all stories that he makes or any films that he's made. He also did Perfect Blue, Paprika, um, Paranoia Agent. This is an awesome manga to check out if you have a chance. I also have other works of his actually. I also have Perfect Blue, the original novel that the movie's based off of, as well as Paprika, the original novel that the, mo that the movie's also based off of. As you see, I am a big fan. I also have his um, short stories collection, Dream Fossils, which I'm still reading, hence the bookmark. But yeah, I'm big fan, big fan. I even have the perfect blue, the storyboards of the perfect blue right here also. <laughs> um, but other than that, I also have Marnie Was There, the original um, volume as well. The movie that Studio Ghibli made a couple years ago. Really awesome movie, you have a chance to check it out. And last but not least, we got J.G. Haru. It's a sex worker, worker in another world. I have not read this yet. I got it because I know I read an article about this a, few, a year ago. And I was like, oh man, this looks really interesting. Yeah, I am going to finish reading this one day. And that is my manga collection. Um, hope you all enjoyed checking it out with me. Um, it was nice actually going through all this. I've been collecting manga since 2011. Um, yeah, first volume was Dragon Ball. Um, and since then I've been trying to expand my collection, you know, grab different shows of different genres, um, give things different chances, but yeah, I like to um, grab as many um, different types of volumes, different types of genres, works from different artists, as well as follow um, various works from artists because you never know what kind of stories they make, you know? Also seeing that growth in the storylines as well. Let me know what your favorite manga is in the comments below, as well as how big your manga collection is, if you have one. And yeah, that's all to say. Peace. Peace.